Paul Dudley. And I'm Maureen Seaver. And breaking news, we have multiple developing situations across the Central Coast this morning. Evacuation orders and warnings being issued for all three counties. Santa Cruz County officials evacuating Felton Grove, Paradise Park, and SoCal Village. Anyone in those locations being asked to move to higher ground immediately. This is because of the San Lorenzo River flooding. In Soquel, Main Street is completely washed out, cutting off those living north of Bates Creek. This is video sent into us uh, by Curtis Alexander from the San Francisco Chronicle. Santa Cruz County officials say crews are working on a solution there. I believe we've got another video of this. Here it is here. This is sent into us from a, a viewer named Michael Kelly. You, another angle here showing uh, Bates Creek flooding Main Street there. You can see a, a lot of emergency personnel there. I mean, the, all that powerful water just wiping away Main Street. I mean, the road's completely gone. It's just tough for those living in that key. Uh, evacuation orders warnings to tell you about here this morning. Evacuation orders are in place in Watsonville. Officials telling people who live along Bridge Street from Main Street to East Lake Avenue that they need to leave. And this area includes the senior living communities of Pajaro Village and Bay Village was under evacuation warning Thursday, but was then upgraded to an order last night around five. Again, this is an evacuation order, meaning officials are saying time to leave. Let's go to Monterey County now. Here are a look at the evacuation warnings in Monterey County because of those river levels. The community of Pajaro, Bolsa Knolls, including nearby homes within the city of Salinas, the Big Sur community, areas near and around the Carmel River Lagoon, low-lying areas along Carmel River from Klondike Canyon Road all the way to the Monterey Bay and the low-lying areas of Arroyo Seco. In Santa Cruz County, warnings in place for Rio Del Mar Flats and the area near Capitola Beach. Again, these are not orders to leave immediately. These are warnings to be ready to go if evacuation orders are given. People in San Benito are being warned that they may need to leave their homes as well. Evacuation warnings are in effect for residents along Lover's Lane, Fraser Lake, and the San Felipe area. If you need to evacuate, there is an evacuation center set up at the Hollister Migrant Housing Center on Southside Road. And PG&E power outages. Now we want to take a look at uh, the map here. This is live of the PG&E outage map. Widespread outages because of trees, wires coming down, especially on the Monterey Peninsula. More than 36,000 customers are without power in Monterey County. Thousands without power up in Santa Cruz County as well. The bulk of those outages in the Ben Loman and Scotts Valley areas. PG&E has no estimated time for when the lights may be able to come back on. Many schools across the area closed this morning from the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. The schools listed on your screen there will be closed today because of the possibility of flooded roads near the campuses. And the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District will have several schools closed as well because of a large power outage across the peninsula we just told you about. In addition, all schools in the Carmel Unified School District are also closed this morning. And just a few minutes ago, we learned that all sites in the Pacific Grove School District have no power. All schools in the district will be closed. And in San Benito County, Hollister High School closed. Any students who are already on campus will be allowed to stay in the auditorium if needed. Spring Grove School and Hollister also closed. And again, Hollister Unified School District, all schools will be closed today as well. Of course, a very, very messy drive out there. Let's get a check of the roads with Jacqueline Dunn. Uh, it's lots of closed roads, lots of trees down on roads, power lines down on roads. It's certainly a mess out there. It sure is, and we're dealing with the power outages, so the signal lights are out. You need to treat those as a four-way stop. Please keep that in mind. Here's a live look outside. This is Highway 101, and it's very difficult to see. This is likely what your windshield is going to uh, look like, so please be careful if you are driving this morning. Right now, we're tracking many closures, including highway closures, and uh, Fairview Road is closed right at 156. Lots of flooding in the roadways along many of those surrounding surface streets. Uh, there was traffic control along Pacheco Pass. He he uh, excuse me, Hecker Pass uh, remains shut down in both directions between Watsonville and Carlton. And we have the Highway 25 ramps from 101 closed. And a big backup has developed along northbound 101 
about a 30 minute drive just from 129 up to 152. Speaking of 129, that's closed in both directions between Murphy Crossing and Highway 101. Getting into Santa Cruz out of Watsonville, northbound Highway 1 is surprisingly in the green, but many closures, lots of reports of uh, mudslides on uh, a lot of those surface streets in and throughout the area. You do need to be careful with those down trees and down power lines. Freedom Boulevard at La Vida, Calabasas Road at Chandler, uh, Redwood Lodge Road, Soquel San Jose Road at Paper Mill, Schultes at Old Santa Cruz Highway, and Trout Gulch at Los Arbolas. So definitely dealing with problems along that stretch. And northbound 101 continues to struggle getting out of Gonzales. This drive time has actually improved 72 minutes, so a little over an hour for drivers just to go from Gonzales into Salinas. This is all due to the roadway flooding along northbound 101 in Chular. That is a check of your traffic. Let's get a check on the forecast now with Holt. Yeah, we've had some flooding, power outages out there because of the heavy rain, the gusty winds that came through with the atmospheric river last night. There is still some heavy rainfall over the next few hours, but the peak of the storm was really 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. In some of our cities, we were picking up half an inch an hour at that time, and number of our stations, around three to five inches at this point, which wouldn't be all that much for a storm at the very beginning of the season, but because it's on top of saturated soils, that's why it just instantly turns into flooding. We're not able to absorb any of it. Now, it also makes sense why we've had flooding when you look at the radar, heavy rainfall coming through overnight and over a long period of time, and Main thing I want to point out now is that there's still those pockets of heavy rainfall you see in the yellow and orange off of the coast, and that's what's going to be moving through over the next one to two hours. So while it may have been lulled a little bit over the last hour or two as we've switched to light to moderate rain, does look like as the front is directly over us, things are going to pick back up again. Now we'll see if the winds pick back up again. So far the strongest we've seen was what came through overnight. We had a 56 mile per hour gust along the Monterey Peninsula. Just strong winds overall, especially throughout Monterey County. That's why when we look at power outages, they have 36,000 people without power right now. And then winds were moving in the right direction. They've been, they've been calming down throughout the morning, and it actually looks like our wind advisory just expired, and now it's just in place through the Central Valley, which is good to see that the strongest winds are behind us. That means it'll most likely be easier for pg e to get out there and start putting the power back on. Now, looking at the water vapor imagery, this just perfectly explains why it's called an atmospheric river. You get all that evaporation in the tropics, and then the winds funnel that moisture directly into the Central Coast, when it bumps into our mountains, it rises up, cools, and then drops out its rainfall, almost like squeezing a sponge. Although it does look like there's still a lot of moisture out there, and that is what's going to be still moving through over the next hour or two. So some heavy rain still on the way, but it looks like by about 4 p.m., the cold front is now below us, and then the heavy rain moves down into Santa Barbara, and we should be in the clear at that point. Now, I shouldn't exactly say the clear. We're still going to have rain through the weekend. It just looks like very minimal rain and nothing compared to what we were seeing last night and what we will still see over the next hour or two. Now, forecast rain amounts, paint that picture. That we've picked up more rain already than what is still to come, although areas like Hollister and the Big Sur could see another two to three inches, so we'll keep a close eye on that. As always, we're also watching our flood alerts very closely, especially the San Lorenzo River, which is still technically in a flash flood warning. Now, this is where there's actually a little silver lining to this. You can see how quickly that river spiked up, but now it is starting to come back down. We were in the moderate stage earlier, then we moved into minor, and it actually looks like we're about to go even farther down back into the action stage. So. Moving in the right direction there, same story for Corlitos Creek. Moved into moderate stage, now we're starting to come down. The one river that I am showing in this forecast that we are going to continue to keep a close eye on is the Big Sur River. That one's in action and still expected to keep rising into the moderate stage over the next few hours. So basic summary there, the storm peaked last night between about 1 and 4 a.m. Although it does look like there's some heavy showers about to move back into the central coast. So we'll see kind of one grand finale to this storm and then things start to calm down into this evening and the winds have already calmed down. And then as we look at the weekend, there's still rain out there. It just looks like 
Nothing compared to the rain we've already picked up. All right, yeah, Holt. some good news, Holt. Yeah, yeah, moving in the right direction. I'd say once we get past the heavy rain, that's about to go through. Yeah, yeah. and then we can start talking about Monday and Tuesday, right? Exactly. Yeah, we can look yeah. for next week. Holt, thanks. All right, uh, we do want to go back to Main Street in Soquel near Bates Creek. This is a live picture right now. We understand that Main Street, as we showed you earlier, is completely washed out, cutting off those living north of Bates Creek. This is a live picture from our photographer, Jarrett Knapp, who just got there. You can see lots of crews there working. There's a gentleman walking through muddy, the muddy road there. Um, and you can see there is that, uh, that closure. And you can see exactly, Lauren, why that road is closed down as Bates Creek washed away Main Street there. That and we're being told also that there's a downed tree on a gas line uh, and you can see crews responding here. There's a backhoe in the scene working mm -hmm. to kind of dig some of that out, um, try to repair the road as quickly as they can for those, again, living north uh, of Bates Creek who have been completely cut off by this by this uh, this incident. And uh, it's safe to say that this is going to be an issue certainly all day. There yeah. are a number of crews out there. We've been talking to Santa Cruz County officials. They say crews are working on a solution, but obviously as you take a live look at this mess here and a number of crews, PG&E, county officials, there's a firefighters out there. This is going to certainly take a long time to clean up. Yeah, and again, the road completely washed out. I mean, it's going to take most of today and if not, you know, the next few days to try to figure out what to do and for of this course, community. We're going to have continuing coverage yes. of this, uh, and we will bring you the very latest updates. If there's anything urgent we need to tell you, we will cut into your programming and let you know. Also have the most uh, on our website, ksbw.com, also on our KSBW News app, and we'll be back here for Action News 8 midday at noon. We'll leave you with the latest numbers from Wall Street.